Bailey overlooked in a couple of drafts. Um, this is a dream come true now? Yeah, definitely. Definitely a dream. Something that you sort of think about as a little kid. Um, and it's probably not something that I thought was possible. I uh, wasn't sure that there was a pathway to the AFL um, as a little kid from Brougham. Um, so it's only really been a realistic dream over the last couple of years. But yeah, so it just makes it all the, all the more sweeter. Your old man's a die-hard docker. How was he when you told him? He's over the moon. Yeah, he, he um, can't get enough of it. He's loving it at the moment. And uh, he met Pav at the JLT game the other, the other week and um, couldn't wipe the smile off his face. He was loving that. And yeah, so he was yeah, stoked for me. Why do you think you did get overlooked in that draft? And have you been able to get your head around it? Because now you're debuting in round one. It's, it's been meteoric since, isn't it? Yeah, it was something that at the time I, had, I did do a lot of reflecting on it. Um, and it's something that was a, it was a tough time and uh, obviously you're hoping all of that year that you're going to get picked up and then when it doesn't happen and uh, I had had some feedback from different recruiters and uh, from Claremont that had been speaking to different clubs and I think a lot of it was based on my kicking and I think I got pigeonholed a little bit as a um, slow inside mid and it was really hard to break that mould so uh, and now I've come here and I'm playing as a small, quick forward. So complete, complete opposites. And um, I suppose it's only really now that I'm breaking that, breaking that pigeonhole. Did you tag for Claremont last year? Is that true? And did that maybe help the Dockers go, you know what, we could play him as the defensive forward? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily a hard tag like the old Ryan Crowley type. It was sort of more um, at stoppages I'd go to their best best stoppage player but then um, from there in general play I was running, running around by myself and just playing, playing my way, playing footy. Um, so it wasn't a hard tag but there was sort of that more defensive focus towards the opposition's um, strongest player. <laughs> yeah he does love a defensive mindset and um, that's something I've tried to bring, bring to the club for sure. How early on Bailey did they sort of tell you that maybe you could have a roll up forward? When did that sort of evolve for you? Uh, well, all through pre-season, I've been training all over the shop. Um, before the JLT series, I was training as a forward, back, mid, wing. Um, played the first intra club on a wing, so I thought that maybe was where I was going to play. And then uh, just before the JLT one in Adelaide, Ross sort of flipped some magnets around and I ended up as a forward rotation um, and was able to go right there. And since then, I've sort of been training mainly as a forward. So I guess it's just Bailey, about grasping just that. Half step forward towards the mic, mate. Thank you. Grasping that opportunity when it arrives unexpectedly, perhaps. Is that what yeah, you feel like yeah, happened? For sure. It wasn't something like a role that I'd trained too too extensively at. So I was just trying to go out there and play my role, bring lots of energy, and things sort of fell into place from there. And that mentioned in the video that the the guys who get run with are pretty happy to have you at the club. What did he mean by that? Does he think? Potentially, you might eventually move into the midfield and do that role. Or? Oh, I think he's just happy having another bigger body around around the contest, someone who can crash and bash a little bit and help help blokes like that out. I don't think you can read too much into that. <laughs> when did you reckon you felt like you could play after a footy? When I mean, was it in this pre-season now, when you knocked over a certain player or, or a star player, or you brought down I don't know, a shoey or someone was? Was there a moment where you thought, you know what, I can, I can match it with these bikes, I can, I can make this work? I, th I think the, the moment that comes to mind when you ask that is in JLT1, sort of running side by side next to, I can't remember who it was, um, and I've sort of timed my bump perfectly and he's fallen over and that was sort of the moment where I've gone, all right, I've, I'm actually a decent size here and I can hold my own, because uh, it's not something you sort of think coming through Colts and then even Waffle, you think the AFL is this massive step up and you're not sure if you can match it, but that sort of gave me the confidence and JLT1 as a whole gave me the confidence that um, maybe I can do it at this level. Sort of like they've got two arms and two legs just like you? Sort of yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. exactly. How did you break the mould of being considered a slow midfielder? Because you're not slow, are you? Uh, just running around like a headless chook, I think, as quick as I can. Um, just playing a different role helps because as an inside mid, you sort of trundle around a little bit and you're wrestling the whole game so it can be hard to break out of second and third gear. So playing this bit of a different role uh, definitely helps. And coming into a new club environment as well, 
where there's new eyes, like the coaches, obviously the recruiters watch a fair bit of footy um, and a fair bit of footage of you through your underage years, but the coaches like, hadn't seen anything. So you sort of come in with a fresh, fresh set of eyes, which definitely helps. Is there anyone at Claremont that really gave you a leg up that really, I mean, you won the BNF last year. Was it Harrow or was it Embers? Or I think Embers is claiming you, but <laughs> is there any, anyone there that you can point the finger at or make them feel good? Uh, I think Kepler Bradley is one that he gave me a lot of confidence. He was coaching the twos last year and, and the year before. And I played five games of twos footy uh, before in my draft year, before I made my league debut. And he really pumped me up and gave me a lot of confidence that I could play at that level. And I think that's sort of where I started building some momentum to go into, go into the league footy. How good's the, the other fella over there? And what have you seen from him as a number two draft pick and going to make his debut as well? Yeah, he's been really impressive the whole whole preseason. I don't think he's set a foot wrong, and you can just see on the track and outside um, in the rooms as well. Just really bubbly bloke, and um, I think he's probably one of the draftees that's built relationships with the whole whole club, and um, and you can see why he's such a good bloke. And um, really looking forward to running out with him on Saturday, and hopefully it goes goes real well. Does it motivate you at all, Bailey? Like probably not a nice way to put it, but. You know, sticking it up a few recruiters when you when you do get out there? Yeah, it definitely does. I was um, the 210th pick over the two drafts, so 209 blokes went before me. And that definitely does give me a lot of motivation that they didn't think I was good enough. Um, all 18 clubs passed on me multiple times and um, to be able to go out and play round one is something really special and something I really um, cherish and hopefully I can make the most of my opportunity. Did the Eagles talk to you? Cause Sounds like Embley was in their ear about you, so... Yeah, Embers was telling me that he was telling them how good I was, but I never spoke to the Eagles. When you first stepped in, and was that when Amros said that, you know, your draft pick numbers out the window, were you, were you sort of like, that's all I need, I'm in the door now? Yeah, well, that was sort of my viewpoint all through my 18s year. I didn't think, I wasn't going to go high, high draft pick. Um, my, my viewpoint's always been, if I can get my foot in the door, then I can hopefully make make the most out of it because yeah as Ross says the draft pick doesn't matter and the recruiters also have a really different um, viewpoint on footy than the coaching staff does so I knew that I was hopeful that once I got in the door um, the coaching staff would see the little things that I can bring on the field and hopefully impress them. Locke was telling me and, and Scotch had said that <coughs> you're obviously a Scotch boy and was there somebody there or something there as well? And you've got some amazing score in your ATAR as well, is that right? You're borderline um, genius? <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> uh, Scotch boys, mate. 99 ATAR, is that right? 99 uh, ATAR? Just shy of that. Didn't crack the 99. But yeah, Scotty Sakurka at Scotch Footy was really, really helpful. He was brought a real professionalism to the program. So being under him for a couple of years was uh, really important for my footy development.